What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, I want to give a big shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers. Yesterday, not only did they get their first win of the season, but also they finally did the right thing. It was a couple of weeks ago where we got the news that the Lakers had finally decided to retire George Mikan's number 99. It was long overdue. If you've been following this channel for years, uh, you've known that I have advocated strongly in several videos that the Lakers finally retire his number. Um, for a very long time, when I was growing up, the Lakers did not really acknowledge their Minneapolis heritage. As a matter of fact, if you remember a lot of Lakers uh, apparel back then, <clears throat> they only counted championships during the Los Angeles era. Uh, starting in the 2000s, they began to acknowledge more and more their Minneapolis roots. And the problem I have with that is, how can you count those championships of that dynasty in the 50s, but not acknowledge the game's first superstar, George Mikan. Now, the Ring of Honor was nice. It's nice that he was in the Ring of Honor. But with his contributions to the Lakers and the NBA warranted more than that. Now, me personally, I think Vern Mickelson and Slater Martin and Jim Pollard's jersey should be retired as well. I don't know if that's going to happen, but George Mikan was a no-brainer and I salute the Lakers for retiring his jersey all right George Mikan was the anchor of five NBA titles uh, starting I think during the 40 was it the 48 49 season I think it was um, he was the league's first true superstar there were stars before Mikan you know Joe Fultz uh, Brad Davies, Max Zaslavsky, but George Mikan was the league's first superstar. As a matter of fact, at the peak of his popularity, when he would play in Madison Square Garden, they wouldn't say the Minneapolis Lakers versus the New York Knicks. The moniker would say George Mikan versus the New York Knicks. Sort of how, like later on, you see Michael Jordan versus such and such. Uh, you start seeing that pop up. That's how big a star George Mikan was. For the NBA. He was their only star. And he was the anchor of their first dynasty. And their most ignored. And most disrespected in my opinion. Dynasty. So. You know. Salute to the Lakers for doing this. This is something that should have been taken care of though. A long time ago. Prior to the rise of Jenny Buss. Prior to even when Jerry. Uh, Dr. Buss took over the franchise. This is something that should have been taken care of when Jack Kent Cook owned the team. And I mean earlier on. This is something that should have happened at least in the 1960s. Uh, but it finally happened. Unfortunately, George Mikan isn't here to see it. He passed away quite a while ago, back in June of 2005. And, you know, the league wasn't too kind to George Mikan. <clears throat> it wasn't too kind at all. George Mikan, uh, unfortunately, suffered in ill health the last few years of his career. And, unfortunately, there was a stupid rule back in, when David Stern was a commissioner where players that played before 1965, I believe it was, were not eligible for health insurance. So many of the older players at that time in Mikan's age range in the 90s and 2000s were in their 70s and 80s and desperately needed access to health care and they didn't get it. And many of these players had to, you know, only depend on Social Security and their pension, which wasn't much prior to 1965. If you played before 1965, your pension was not much at all. So thankfully, uh, the NBA has done a better job at, 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 you know, at 
of having available health care at the expense of players, uh, no matter when they was playing in the NBA, and also ABA players. As we see, there are a lot of ABA players who now uh, are struggling because of advancing age and not having access to, to health care. Uh, but anyway, salute to the Lakers. Tell me what you guys think.